Hi, this is Lauren Engel of Sidewalk Talk to him here with Ori, who does artist development for Monster Cat. And I'm just starting this whole new series where I have people who are at the top of their industry to explain what it's like working behind the scenes. So I want to make this series super informative for you guys. And we have Ori to kick started. If you're an artist looking to submit to a label, there's a lot that goes into consideration. Key factors for us are, is the music awesome? That to me is the most important thing. At the same time, that's the area that a record label can really help you with. Fine tuning aspects of your music is what the job of an A&R is and, and putting you, positioning you as an artist in a way that you can enter, you know, creatively uh, inspiring spaces and connect with other people. That That's something that a record label can really support you on. Where sometimes it's a bit more difficult to kind of paint the vision or, or path for an artist is on things like the brand. You're never going to get signed on your music without somebody at least looking at your brand. So it's important that you have like some sort of vision, something that's coherent. Ultimately, it's the packaging, you know, and a lot of times people are not going to buy something, even if it's this cool little product, if it's covered in this packaging that that isn't uh, clear and isn't easy for people to understand it's something that people can relate to so i think that beyond the music like brand is a huge component that an artist at least needs to be like cognizant of if they like have an understanding or some form of a vision uh, a record label or management or, or anyone else involved in the project can come in and sort of like push that further but if you don't have that spark it, it's all we're doing is just throwing gasoline on the floor and, and then it evaporates you know like an artist needs to have that like idea or spark or something to make it feel like authentic if a label had to give every artist their brand um you'd have 50 artists with the same brand i, I think it's important to note that like music comes into a record label from a number of different places and so from a label perspective, from the music and a and team, it's our responsibility to gather all that, to listen to everything, I think is incredibly important. You know, listening to demos is is like also like a service to our community as well. You know, we want to make sure that they're aware that every single thing that they've poured their heart and soul into, we, we listen to. When we find songs that we like or that we think could be a good fit, usually it's something that we share immediately because when you're excited about something like you can't necessarily sit you know a week until the next A&R meeting and then and, and then show it like if we're really excited and passionate about something we're going to share it right away and then we're going to gather feedback and, and eventually have a, a sit down conversation with everyone on the team and just say like you know it's not always a matter of are we going to sign this or not it's like are we going to explore this opportunity uh, is this opportunity worth diving more into once we've kind of listened to the records together and everyone's uh or at least the majority of people are are behind this and the people who are really going to champion the release are bought into it that's when we you know start engaging in conversations with the artist or the management and just get a feel for what that interaction is like you can be the best producer, you can have the best brand, but if at the end of the day, you're not a, a personality that I can work with for the next six to 12 months, nonstop, every day, emails, phone calls, like if that isn't a, a like if that doesn't click, then that can also play into the decision that we make on an artist. I think when you're submitting a demo, it's really important to think about who the person on the other side is what they're looking for and how you can kind of get like straight to the point. The, you know, five paragraph email or correspondence is something that I'll read through after I've listened to the song. So I think it's really important to send over something that's going to catch my ear. And that doesn't always have to be, you know, a full three and a half, four minute long demo. It can be a, a snippet, something that you're really excited about. Um, the part of your song that you know is going to speak to me the most or to the a and on the other side once we've heard a song that we're, we're excited about that's when we'll look into the story uh, that's when we'll you know jump on your spotify or your soundcloud or your apple music account see what's on there you know see what kind of audience you've built it can be a hundred people it can be 20 people, it can be 20,000 people. That, that doesn't necessarily matter, but it's like the commitment, dedication, and the passion that your audience at whatever size it is that they have for your music is incredibly important. 
the reason why I think that's so important is because from a label perspective, I really want to see that you're like able to go out there and create something of your own. It doesn't have to be something, you know, uh, remarkable or massive or anything crazy. It just has to be something like you need to be motivated because as a label, I need to know that the artist is just as like dedicated and like passionate and committed to this project uh, as they are requiring us to be. So yeah, making sure that you're communicating to a label who you are, what your goals are. Goals are incredibly important. You know, some of the artists that we've gone on to work with that we've seen the most success with are the ones that, you know, once we started having conversations have come to us with like a, here's the plan for the next 12 months. Here's where I hope to be in three years time. Those goals don't, you don't always have to know how to achieve those goals. You just have to set those goals and set a date. Um, and then we can work with you as an artist uh, to get you to that point or to figure out, you know, what are the steps that will hopefully achieve those goals that you set up. To be completely honest, the best way to get our attention is to do dope shit <laughs> i i think that you know at a record label as an a and r your job is to have your ear to the ground your job is to understand you know who's coming up in the space and so as as a sort of aspiring artist you just need to be present you need to be everywhere and you need to do cool things and that'll get our attention more than anything else that you can do you also have to participate in the community so, you know, come to events, don't party too crazy, try and meet somebody, be professional, be respectful. You know, I, I know a lot of us wish we could dedicate more time to working one-on-one -on -one with artists that are not signed to the label yet or to provide more resources to those people, but it's not always feasible. You know, we have a, a number of artists that, that work working with that we're focused on so it can be as an aspiring artist very difficult to like cut through all that noise there's a hundred people submitting to monster cat every day new demos and so in a, in a week's time you have 700 competitors who are also fighting for that spot and we only sign you know at most five new artists a year that we bring on and, and those are not always just people that um that are submitting through demos. Like there's other ways that artists are connecting with Monster Cat. So it is incredibly competitive out there. So the best piece of advice and the best thing that you can do is just be self-motivated, start doing something on your own and hope that the right people notice. Cause if you're doing great things, the right people will find you. I would say that a first impression uh, of your music is actually not that important. One of the things that we get a lot of pride of is seeing how an artist has progressed. I mean, all of your favorite musicians started off submitting crappy demos to somebody. That's just how this industry works. And so I don't think that we necessarily, you know, you don't get blacklisted from submitting or anything like that. If you send something that's not the right fit, where our first impression is very important is how you take that feedback you know, are you respectful of the decision that a label has made? Are you incredibly persistent to a point of, you know, creating a bad first impression? I think that those are things you need to be very aware of and know that it might take the 50th time that you submit a song before we start going like, oh, you know, this is actually something that we're really interested in and that's okay. Um, and so I think as an artist, you should be very aware of that. And you're not going to burn any bridges by submitting a, a poorly mixed song or a, a genre that's not the right fit or maybe something that, you know, I had a bad morning and I listened to it and I just didn't vibe with it. That's never going to, you know, put you in a bad position. What will put you in a bad position is being aggressive or rude or disrespectful or inconsiderate of the, the sort of situation or whatnot. I think that those are more important. Thank you guys so much for watching. And of course, we're already- Thanks for having me. I know, it's been so fun. I've learned- Keeping me so hostage all day. <laughs> I know, we filmed like so many hours. So you guys, please watch all three videos. <laughs> um, but I've learned so much from today too. Yeah, thanks yeah, for having me. It was like, a lot of fun. Yeah, like just so informative. And if you guys have found this 
um, really helpful for your career. Just share it to your friends or whoever you know that's wanting to work in music industry, no, no matter where they are in the world, or producing, or just huge fans of Monster Cat. Just feel free to share like any of these videos that we filmed today. Perfect. Yeah.